hello and welcome to the Crochet Chain podcast. This is number five of my podcast, although I did slip in a little extra one that was a bit of advertising for Woolwich Junction 13. Now, welcome if you are a new subscriber. Hi, welcome. Uh, I hope you enjoy what we're going to be uh, discussing today or what I'm going to be chatting about today. Um, I can't quite believe that I now have 195 subscribers on YouTube and uh, that's to me that's that's absolutely incredible that there's 195 of you that want to kind of watch my videos on a regular basis so thank you thank you if you were number one subscriber and thank you if you are 195 subscriber but I'm going to do a little gift so for the 200th person to subscribe um, I'm going to contact them and see if they would like to have uh, as a little prize for being the 200th subscriber uh, my mystery shawl crochet along not so mystery now really because uh, four of the shawls are already out there number five is coming up you can see number five around my neck I I'm getting a little warm today because you know the weather's been quite warm recently hasn't it yeah not quite sort of blanket weather, crochet blanket weather and things, is it? No, no. Anyway, I have a ton of things to talk to you about. Um, please, if you would like any questions answered, I would absolutely love to be able to answer your questions. So I'm going to do a little tip section. Uh, I have an idea of what to do for this time because it's a question that I always get asked. And that's how do you keep your side straight? When you're working in rows, how do you keep the side straight? Well, a little bit later in this video, I'll be showing you a tutorial which shows you how to do that with treble stitches. But on to news. So, Woolwich Junction 13. I had an amazing time there. I had an amazing time there. I had four workshops. Um, one hour and two hour workshops Tunisian and tapestry one of each of each uh, I had great fun the ladies that I taught were amazing um, I even learned things from them because uh, we were doing some tapestry crochet which is two colors and I hold them both on one hand and she kind of held it on her yarn on two separate hands uh, like you would if you were continental and English knitting to do your color changes uh, but she did it with a crochet hook. It was fascinating. So we learn things from people that we're teaching as well, which is just, just lovely. I just love the crafting community. And my final session, my final workshop, had 10 lovely ladies doing Tunisian crochet. Um, and we had a, a lovely time, absolutely lovely time. Now, if you know of a show that you would like me to teach at, then please uh, contact me. Um, the links are all down down below. Oops, this is it's just slipping off a bit. Okay, oh, look, there's my walls. I can't wait to tell you about this one. I can't wait to tell you about this one. But I'm going to. I am, because before that, oh, before I say anything else, uh, Will at Junction 13, the lovely Ingrid, um, just absolutely lovely. If you get a chance to go to this show next year, I would definitely grab it. It has a different vibe to other shows that I've been to. It was very festivally. Um, there was news, live music. There was some amazing food. The guy that did the samosas, oh, absolutely gorgeous samosas for like a pound each they were. It was just brilliant. Um, and then there was a, a vegan, vegetarian vegan stall as well uh, he did some lovely falafel um, and there was some really good coffee as well so it's a fantastic show to go to so if you you know stick it in your diaries for next year I'll put the dates down below I haven't got I don't know or I'll put them up here yes later <laughs> when I edit I can stick some text in there and tell you what what dates it's on okay so teaching I love teaching so I have, I'm a primary school teacher by trade, I guess you'd say. I do feel like I have a gift for teaching. I think um, I, I enjoy doing it. I, I love when people, when you have that light bulb moment and uh, things kind of fit together. And I just adore passing on the skills that I've learned. 
and I've learned from all sorts of sources. So I've learned from some excellent teachers myself, uh, but I also look at YouTube uh, and various other things and just discussing with other people just to find out what they do and how they do things. And it sort of all amalgams into kind of my own style of teaching. So um, I have had good reports about my teaching. If you think that there's somewhere that I would like that you that I could go, another show, I would absolutely love that because personal recommendations are always the best thing. So if you've been taught by me, oh, that was the other thing. So if you've been taught by me, could you go to my new Facebook page, which is Diana Benstead Crochet Teacher. Um, you can, I think you can search the sort of, uh, if you search Facebook for Diana Crochet Teacher, all kind of one word, then you should find it, I think. Anyway, I'll put a link down, down below as well so that you can find it. If you've been taught by me, I would love you to put a review in. If you're not happy about how I teach, also put a review down there because it's that's how I can learn, uh, is if I haven't explained something or, you know. Uh, I'm happy to talk to people about that. So a couple of things that you can contact me about is if you have any questions about crochet and then also if you've got a review for me, that would be amazing. Going back to the teaching, I'm doing a couple of uh, courses, Learn to Crochet. We call it Crochet for All so that if you've just started crocheting but you haven't learnt how to read patterns or if you are a bit rusty, you know, you, you picked it up when you were a child and, and then you, you want to come back to it. So you know how to hold a hook. You can probably make a chain or do a crochet border on your knitting. Um, but you want to know a bit more and how to read a pattern. Then I'm doing two five-week courses and I'm going to put the link down here. You can also find details of the courses on my new crochet Diana Crochet Teacher page on Facebook. Uh, also on there, I'm doing a course at Missenden Abbey, which is quite an unusual course. <clears throat> Not something I've done before, but it's project based. So we are going to do this project now. This is really lovely, colourful bag. You will get, it's quite expensive, but you get all of the materials required. You get the pattern and you get me talking you through how to do this amazing bag so it's a bag at the moment but you could make it into a cushion cover um, you get all of the yarn that you need and the crochet hook that you need to do this um, if I go and zoom in a bit you can see that it starts off fairly simple and we've got a few bobbles and things uh, and then it goes into some textures we've got some uh, post stitches we've got shells and bobbles and clusters and at the top there we've got some popcorns making like a little flower border so we've got lots and lots and lots of different techniques here we've also got um, a very integrated technique for doing the uh, sides uh, where we're doing a lot of double crochets and we can add the handle there I apologize for that it's on a bit of cardboard that's because I use this for display and you need to have it out so you can see it like that. So this amazing bag. So this is a course at Missenden Abbey that I'm running. If you have a look down below in the links, I'll put a link to it there as well. And if you want to try that, it's suitable for people who have started to crochet, but maybe can't read a pattern. We'll go through all the pattern reading parts of it. Um, so it'll be, I think it's going to be a really good course. Uh, we haven't got anybody on it at the moment. It's possibly going to be cancelled. But if you think you might like to do that, go and have a look at the details. Thank you. Uh, this is the kit that you get. So you get a full kit of all those colours, plus you get a lining colour as well, fabric. Okay, so that's, that's the courses. What else have I been doing this month? Well, hmm, I purchased some yarn. Oh, how unusual, they said. Yeah, I know. Two lots, but I can't find one of them at the moment. Anyway, this one I thought I would show you because this one I bought at Woolwich Junction 13. I think you might be seeing a bit of a theme on the old colours here. Yeah, I know. Not what with the rainbow pattern blanket at the background and this. Oh, okay. So this is from 
I think you can see there. Joe Knit Sew. Can you see? Is it focused? It's not focused. Look at that lovely kit. So there are six 50 gram skeins. And what I really like is that it won't really matter where you start. They sort of blend together no matter where you start and where you finish. So if I hold them up a bit like this, oh dear, okay. So if I hold them up a bit like this, you can see that you would be able to go from one to the other. They all blend all the way around. They didn't because the pink's in the wrong place. Hang on a second. That's better. So you can see that it really wouldn't matter where you started because they all kind of blend into one another. So I'm really looking forward to doing something with these. I am thinking that this might be the start of one of my tops that I'm going to do next year. I'm going to do some patterns next year. It's exciting. I've got to get the shawls finished first. Can't get distracted, I know. But I've started planning what I'm doing for next year, pattern-wise, pattern-writing-wise. So this is Jo Nitso. There's, it's, the colourway is called 30 Shades of Fade. 30 Shades of Fade. She does minis in all these colours and she decided to kind of put them all together. So I may contact her for some solids in one of these colors. Um, and that's, there's 425 meters to 100 grams, and there's six by five by 50 grams. So it's 300 grams in there. Uh, and it's merino nylon sock. Uh, but those colors are absolutely lovely. Um, I've got a bit of a thing about rainbows at the moment, as you can tell. Don't tell you always, I love rainbows. Okay, so the next thing is what's on my hook. So apart from the shawls, uh, I was wondering what to do with all the bits and pieces of four ply that I was having left over from my shawls. And I saw Faye from my Stitch and Bitch group. She was doing the knitted mitered squares blanket and they were little little that wasn't a square was it they were little squares kind of about this they were little squares kind of about this big that wasn't I, would, I did that and it's not a square is it so they were little squares about this big and she was joining as you go um and I thought well that's an interesting idea I wonder if there's something like that in crochet and lo and behold, I found something like that in crochet. Now, uh, this is, it's an Australian pattern. It wasn't cheap, but it was well worth it. I tell you, it's well worth it. It's called the Speckled Squares Blanket. Okay, so it's called the, it's a bit scrunchy because I printed it off and then put it into my bag with all my bits and pieces. So it's called the Speckled Squares Blanket. It's by Soul Yarn. Again, I'll put the link down below in the thingy. And it has lots of detail on what, how you, I've kind of printed it, I've printed it off a bit strange. But it's got lots and lots of detail, lots of photos and lots of things to show you how to do it. And so I thought, this is great. I can put all my bits and bobs of yarn into one bag and I can have my speckled squares blanket and it's kind of like a little memory blanket and it's I'm really enjoying it it's one of those things you can kind of switch your brain off for a bit um randoming mm, that's hard but this is how it looks at the moment and you can see that I've got some random things there's a couple of repeats in there I'll tell you what they are in a minute so we've got some yarns that I've used in shawls. There's this one, which I dyed with Marie, uh, and that was like a little rainbow thing. Um, this one was gifted to me. It's a mini that was gifted, and I didn't know what to do with it. So same with this one. This is from Easy Knits. Um, this is from uh, the shawl that I'm going to show you in a minute. Um, we've got some more Easy Knits here. Um, and we've got this skein here. Is I got this... Uh, yarn as a, a little kit from Rosie's Moments and I didn't know what to do with the yarn because it's not quite the colours that I'd like 
um, mainly because I wasn't brave enough to put the grape on everywhere because the grape would have been my favourite colour because purple. Uh, you know me, I like purples and pinks and blues and rainbows. It's a little on the orange side for me, but I think mixed in with the other colours here, I think it works really well. This one here you will recognise in a minute as well because it's the yarn from, can you see this over here? We've got something that matches that. So it's quite kind of quite nice because it's lots of different memories of different things that I've made in four ply and you just join it as you go and it's just fabulous it's just fabulous so if you're looking for something to use up all your ends I can thoroughly recommend that pattern and it's the sort of pattern that you can do at a stitch night which is great fun okay you get a couple of squares done in a stitch night at least two I think I can do one in about 45 minutes so it's kind of a nice quick project nice one to have kind of in between projects as well okay so that I think is that for the moment so <gasps> my shawl my shawl my shawl my kingdom for a shawl so before I get on to my shawls just a quick note about the pattern in the background so this is a blanket pattern it's my um, rainbow pattern it's available on Etsy and I think don't know if it's on Ravelry so I'm going to make sure that I put it on there very soon it's a grey square but it's got different sized squares so it's been joined as you go uh, the pattern is very involved and it has all of these colours and all the details all in one now I do usually sell the yarn pack for this as well I haven't been able to order it because Starcraft have been out a couple of colours this is, it's done in Stylecraft Special DK, uh, and it's a great fun pattern if you like grey squares. Now, people that know me know that I have a love-hate relationship with, with granny squares. I think at the moment there is a, an awful lot of patterns out there that just take a granny square and make a top out of it. Um, one of these sort of big baggy cardigan-y things where you just basically make a big granny square and attach it at the corners to make this big drapey I don't think it suits a lot of people either that particular shape but you know people make what they want to make so you know if you like granny squares I have absolutely no problem and I love them for beginners because that's what people recognize as being crochet but I think crochet is so much more and so whenever I teach, and one of the reasons we're doing the shawl patterns, is to show that it can be so much more than just a granny square. So whilst I do love granny squares, and I love this blanket because I love the colours and things like that, and I do think that it's really great for beginners, I do think the crochet is so much more, and that's what I try and put across whenever I'm teaching, and whenever I'm, I'm doing making patterns, so that you know, people can make something that's beautiful and lovely and not just quirky granny square I love them but I hate them okay <laughs> I don't hate hate's a strong word hate's a strong word I just think we can do a bit better than that can't we so I nearly forgot to tell you about a new product that I've got in my Etsy shop and due to doing the Zena quite shawl last time which is this one that I've done in a Sheppies whirl and this colorway is Fruity O Tutti or Fruity O Tutti depending on how you pronounce it so this fade shawl is absolutely gorgeous I had lots of compliments when I showed it at uh, Woolwich Junction 13 and it's done in a Sheppies whirl because I, ha I haven't quite got the pattern ready it just needs tech editing I need to make sure it's right before I publish it uh, so it just needs a bit of tech editing which I'll do after I've got this one out so that's coming up very very soon so I decided that it would be a really nice idea to sell some Sheppies Whirl in my Etsy shop so that you could make up like a little kit uh, so I've got a few colours I haven't got all of the colours if there's a colour you particularly like, let me know and I will try and get hold of it for you. But I did just a little uh, pre, kind of just a, a little test run of getting hold of it. It's a new supplier for me. 
Uh, and so I thought, well, you know, let's just see. So we have Fruitio Tutti. I'm sorry, they're all in the plastic. We have Fruitio Tutti, which is what that shawl was done in. Then, and I'm really liking this. I might make up one myself in this. This is rose water cocktail. Look at that. It's gorgeous. Gorgeous colours. Goes from a yellow through to a pink and then a pink through to a turquoise and then turquoise through to a teal. Absolutely gorgeous colour that is. Um, then we have, I think this is jelly bean. Jelly bean, which is of course rainbows because, you know, I love rainbows. And that kind of runs from a purple to a turquoise to a green to a yellow to an orange to a red. So proper rainbowy colour that one. Really like that. As I say, I apologise it's still in there for plastic. But I don't want to get them out before I actually sell them. Uh, then I've got one which is a really gorgeous purpley colour. So it actually goes from a really, I don't know if you can see it in there, a really, really dark kind of navy colour through to a blue, through to a mid blue, through to a light blue, through to a lavender colour, uh, then a purpley colour. Uh, all the way out to the edge again that's a lovely another lovely lovely colorway I wouldn't pick a colorway I didn't like um, and then now this one I think I've only got one left of this because I've already sold two and this one is green tea tipple and it goes starts with a gray quite a dark gray goes through to a lighter gray which then goes through to a light teal a mid teal and then a dark teal so I think that's that's a lovely colourway as well. And then lastly, but not least, for the moment anyway, is this one which is called Nighttime Bubbles. Don't know. Oh, Nighttime Bubbles. So these represent the northern lights, I've been told, where it starts with the grey on the outside. So it's the night time and then it goes through to the pink in the, in the middle. So if I do a close up of that. So this one starts in middle. So I've said starts because that's I would always start these from the middle. Of course, you could start them from the outside and go the other way round. But this one's a dark pink that goes through to a mid pink, a light pink a light grey, a mid grey and then a really dark grey. I don't think it's quite, that well, might be black. I don't think it's quite black but it's certainly very 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 dark grey that last one. So I know that, I'm sorry that's not a brilliant colour through the polythene but I, I do want to keep these nice and neat um, and I do have a cat at home with the long hair so I don't like to unpack things if I don't need to. Anyway, those are going to be on sale. Sorry, they are on sale now in my Etsy shop and they are at a special price for the time being of £19 per ball, which I think is the cheapest anybody will get. And obviously, you've got postage and packing on top because that's not free. Uh, and for small people like me, um, I'm really sorry, but I can't swallow up that cost. However, I have done these at £19 each on my Etsy shop. So if you would like one of those colours, then let me know. I'll put a link again down, down, down below in the doobly doo. Anyway, so this is my fifth shawl. So we'll get onto the shawls. This is my fifth shawl. And this one was nicknamed Toxic Snot. I know... Claire, thanks a lot. But here we go. So this one was nicknamed Toxic Snot. The reason being, when I started, we had this blue and this green, these green dangly bits. And if you've taught children or if you've had some association with young children, you'll know about the little bits of, yes, we don't need to say any more about that. So it starts off quite green. OK, um, but I also think that it looks very much like seaweed and a particular type of seaweed, bladderack seaweed. I think it looks very much like that. So that's why it's called bladderack, this one. So it's not named after a place in Cornwall, but it's named after seaweed that you might find in Cornwall. I've just seen the end. <sighs> Do you know what? It happens to everybody, doesn't it? You get an end poking out. Okay, you're just going to have to ignore that. 
unless I can push it in. Maybe I can push it to the back. There we go. Okay, pushed it to the back. That's better. That's better. Okay, so this is a three skein shawl. Okay, so it's a big shawl. It's a lovely shape. It's the same or a very similar shape to Perrinporth, but it is a bit bigger. Okay, so you can see that it's, it's lovely and it's very squishy and it's great when you put it on. So if I put it over my shoulders, you can see that it drapes right over my shoulders. Um, let's go up again. And it drapes. So it will drape right over your shoulders. Um, and it just is just lovely. I love bubbles. I love bubbles. I know I've been a bit obsessed with bubbles. Well, this is the bubble shawl to end all bubble shawls. Okay, so it's a lovely slightly asymmetric right angled triangle but it also has these fringes now I've done them so that you've got like a one bubble fringe and then a two bubble fringe I call them bubble strings actually in the pattern so it's a one bubble string and a two bubble string and a three bubble string and so on until you get to the end oh let me find it hold on when you have these lovely long bubble strings really nice I have to say okay they do take they are a little bit fiddly but I think the overall effect just makes it worth doing so I can hold this up like this so you can see all of the string all the fringy bits here okay so they're all down here gorgeous bobbliness but you've also got bobbles in the body of the shawl too where I've changed colour so we start at the point because I always think that it's nice to start at the point then we don't have any great big foundation chains to start with and you will be doing 17 rows there. Now actually before I go into a description I'll go back to the yarn. The yarn I've used here is by Easy Knits. You know my you know I love my Easy Knits yarn. I love John and I love his colours and I love his whole ethos and so this is uh, a hand dyed yarn there's a big long story to why I've got different things but different colors and things but this is uh, let me just double check for you this is fidget singles so that's a merino with a one ply so one strand which makes it really nice and soft when it's washed. So do, do be aware, it does change character slightly after you've crocheted it. So when you've washed it, it does soften up and it just becomes this gorgeous, ah, gorgeous squishiness in this shawl. Okay, so this one here is Fidget's Single Ply 100% Merino. And because it's hand dyed, what you need to do now, usually when things are hand dyed and you're knitting them, then uh, if you need more than one skein for a project, what they will recommend is doing one row in one ball and one row in another ball and one row and one row and one row and one row. However, with crochet and particularly with this pattern, because you're doing a row of trebles and then a row of doubles, uh, that wouldn't work because it wouldn't mix it up enough and you'd end up using much more of one and much less of the other and it would all get very complicated when I write it in the pattern. So what I've done is I've said that each section between the bobbles should be in a in the second yarn. Now these two happen to be fairly different because you've got this one which is quite light with quite some dark bits here and then this one which is slightly darker. Now, if I didn't point it out to you, you probably wouldn't notice. You can see it quite clearly there, I think. But I think that adds to the shawl. I, I'm really quite pleased with the shawl. So this is, and it's really strange because there's a bit towards the end, it started pooling. So pooling is when you get a kind of a stripy pattern in your yarn and it kind of happened at the end here. Oh, you can't really see it on this. When you look at the picture, ah, oh, there you go. Okay, so it suddenly started doing this pooling. 
which was really strange. But I think it's because it's a different length of row each time. As you can see, it's really nice and drapey, this shawl. I just, I love this shawl. It's just so nice. Now that it's blocked, it just feels so much better. Um, so you've had two skeins of the main colourway, which if you're using hand-dyed yarns, I would recommend alternating each section. And then in between that, you have rows of bobbles, which are done in the double crochet. So you have a double crochet and then you, you have five double crochets and then you do a bobble. Now, all of these bobbles are on the right side of the shawl. But when you're doing the double crochet row, you're working on the wrong side of the shawl. So for two of the rows, but on one of the rows, you're working on the right side. And this is all explained in the pattern, but I thought I might as well show you now. So this row is a five treble bobble, and this row is a six treble bobble. Then this one is a five treble bobble again. And the reason for that is because you're working one way and then you're working the other way. So with my thing, I don't, I hate, I hate cutting yarn when I don't need to. So it did seem like really silly to kind of start with this and do a row of bobbles and then do a bobble string and then cut the yarn and then start again the next side. So the way I've done it is doing the, like I did with the um, Perimpore shawl colour changes, we actually work up the edge in between the rows so can you see there we've worked up the edge now there is a full tutorial after this about how we do that but you start with a bobble string let me go to a smaller section so I can show you better so you would start this row with your bobble string come out come back do the row along here get to the end it travels up, you do your in-between row, and then you go back along here with your six treble bobbles along the middle one. Then you do your string out and back. And then at this point here, you'll see that this row, it's joined slightly together where the, uh, where the color is being brought up the side there. And then you complete that row. And then you fasten it off, and then you cut the yarn. So you've done those three rows and I think this technique is probably fairly unique to me where when you change, when you do these stripes in your yarn, you're working one way and then going back to the beginning and picking up the colour and working the same direction and then working back and then picking up the same colour and working back in the same direction because I like, I don't think you can see, I don't think you can see that those rows are alternating, uh, that they're anything other than normal rows. And I think once it's blocked, I don't think you see that. I don't think you see it visually. And so I've used this technique on a couple of shawls now, so that when you're changing colour, you're using as little as possible, cutting as little as possible. So the one skein that I've got here, the two, sorry, the two skeins are fidget singles, and then you'll notice that the bobbles change from being quite vivid green to a more neutral green in the middle to a kind of a greeny pinky colour. And then finally, kind of with pink. OK, so this is the pinky ones. OK, this is because I used a set of minis and the set of minis was, I'm just checking because I don't want to get it wrong. Uh, the set of minis was Wicked Let's fades so it's a different yarn but it seems to work fine people are doing this now using different you never used to do this to use different yarns in the same project but people are doing that a lot now and I've used it here you could of course use singles fades I noticed that John doesn't have any wicked list fades at the moment so he has singles fades which would you could use instead that would be absolutely fine. I encourage you to be really adventurous with colour on this one because I there's something about this and I'm thinking that I would really quite like to use two single colour sushi rolls. 
so that the center section here, the center section, center panels, would just gradually change color and then gradually change color again, and then have some neon pops in in with these colors here, some colors that weren't in the, just to make it really, really wackily, wackily colorful. I might just speak to John about that because I think that would be amazing. I think it would look terrific. So that's done in Easnit's yarn. As you can see, it's a beautifully drapey shawl and it's got these lovely fringes on them. Now, if you wanted to, of course, you don't have to put as many bobbles in. You could do plain rows with just with the bobble strings. You could change the bobble strings so that they're long bobble strings all the way along. I've just decided to do it sort of so that it comes out and it's long towards the end. Now, the second version of this, because I've been doing two versions of each of my shawls for you, just so that you can see what it looks like in a different colourway. And so this one I've done in, well, actually I didn't do it, Nulu, Louise, thank you very much for being my pattern tester. So this one, equally big, equally gorgeous, uh, but this is done in West Yorkshire Spinners Signature 4-ply. And I've used a single colour, a single colour all the way through for the background. So you don't need to do the changing and things like that that you do with hand-dyed. Um, and then we've had a contrasting sock yarn to do the best. I think it just looks so interesting to have that sock yarn being used in a different way against a plain colour. So this is what I mean about being adventurous with colour. I mean, really have a go. Have a, You just need two skeins of one colour and one skein of the other or one ball. So 100 grams of four ply, two of one colour, one of the other. You could have a plain colour, do all the bobbles the same colour. That would be good. That would be good. That would be interesting. You could do, uh, as I say, a gradient or something like that. I think it's an exciting project uh, that you could really let rip on the colour side of things. And as I say, it's a lovely big squishy shawl. So I don't always, I don't know, I don't think necessarily this is one that I, you can wear front ways like this. Um, apart from anything, you probably dip your, dip your bubbles into things as you leaned over. But I do think it is a lovely... It's a lovely big piece of fabric as a shawl. I just think it's amazing. And I think, you know, in these sort of summer evenings when you just need a little bit of something extra over the top, there we go. And I just think I love bubbles. I love bubbles. I love bubbles. I've probably told you before, I really love bubbles. And I think this is just really working well. So that's my podcast for today. Uh, I'm going to just uh, say thank you again for following me uh, and I'm looking forward to the 200th subscriber. If you've got a friend that uh, hasn't subscribed yet, then let them know, please, because that would be great. And um, keep crocheting, get hooked, keep crocheting, get hooked on crochet. Uh, have a lovely time this month and I will see you soon. So this is the tips and techniques slot and I'm going to show you how to make straight edges on treble crochet. If I go a bit closer, so here you can see that there's a turning chain here and that the first stitch is going in here, but this in fact is part of this first stitch. So the turning chain here counts as your first stitch. This one has gone into the wrong place because it's in the same place as this stitch, effectively creating an increase here, okay? And then at this end, the last stitch is here, and this stitch has gone in to that last stitch, but not counted the turning chain, and we need to count the turning chain when we're doing that. There's also a way that we can turn our work as we finish each row that means that when we come back and we're working into our turning chain that we can actually see the chain as we're doing it. So I'm going to show you how to do these little techniques that might help so that you don't have this 
wiggly edge here. So I've done my first row and I've just done a little row of 10 stitches so that we can see what we're doing. First row is always slightly different because we don't have uh, anything else to go on. You can see that I have worked into the bump of the chain so the bottom of my little foot strip is the same as the top. But this is the top here. So when we get to the end we're going to do our three chains as before we turn. Now I always make my three chains before I turn. Uh, you can do your you can turn and then do your chains but if you do that you may not turn it in the right direction. So the direction that we turn it is actually with this bit here we're going to turn it away from us like so and then when we come back along those chains will be in the right place. So here is our three chains for our turning chain. The turning chain counts as the first stitch. So where we've got our first stitch here, the top of the first stitch is slightly to the left of the post of the stitch. When we're working in rows, then it's slightly to the left. That's the first stitch, but we already have our first stitch with our three chains. So we're going to go into what looks like the second stitch and then we're going to work in one treble in each stitch along. Now it's not perfect because three chains is slightly too tall for a standard treble. Uh, so you can do and some patterns will ask you to do two chains for the turning chain, which also counts as a stitch. Oops. Uh, but there's another technique that I will show you in a moment that can also help if it's if your three chains are really baggy. Okay, so we can either do two or or three as a turning chain. So we're coming towards the end. Now you'd think that maybe I've only got one more stitch to go but actually I have two. So my first treble is going into this last actual stitch going in there. We always go under two strands of yarn as well and then when we get to our turning chain you can see this one's turned away from us. This always happens on the first row there's not much we can do about it. So how I solve that is I'm going into the chain which is where you can see this is this strand here that's coming out of that last stitch that you've just done and I'm going to poke my hook in to the top so that I've got one strand but then I'm going to push it through the hole so that when I yarn over and finish off the stitch okay we're under two strands so having a closer look at that We've done one stitch into the last actual treble and then one stitch into the turning chain there. Okay, and then we're going to do three chains and do it again. So we're going to do one, two, three chains and turn. And you'll notice that I turn away from me, away like that. And then we're going to miss this very, very first treble stitch and go into what looks like the second treble stitch and I will see you at the end of this row and we're nearly at the end again and we have this treble stitch and then we have our chain and we can see our chain a lot clearer this time so you've got one two three chains but we still haven't gone into that very last one there so let's go into that first that's into our last actual stitch but then we have to go into the last stitch which is the turning chain and as I say you can see one two three chains this is the one that's coming out of there and this time it is easier for us to go in under two strands there, yarn over, pull through and then complete our treble. And as you can see there it kind of pulls that treble, the chair, the turning chain, it kind of pulls the turning chain up 
straighter. So these edges are already a lot straighter than this one. Okay, so even though I've only done three rows, you can see the comparison that this is a much straighter row. So we've got a couple of little techniques that help that. One is turning the work away from us after we've done the three chains. So we do the three chains, turning the work away from us, making sure that we don't go in the very first one, go into the second one because this counts as our first stitch. And then at this end, making sure that we go into the top of the turning chain as well as the last actual stitch there. Remembering that the stitch is slightly to the left, the top of the stitch is slightly to the left of the post of it. Okay, because that's one stitch. Okay, now if you still find that your chains are bulging, so you can either do two chains or a little technique that I've learnt that helps sometimes with this is to do your first two chains a little bit tighter. So we're going to make this chain tighter and then we're going to make the second chain tighter as well. But you have to be careful with this. Your third chain has to be normal size. The third chain is the one that you're going to be going into when you come back along the row. So I'm going to just carry on this row. So we're missing the very first one, going into what looks like the second one because the turning chain counts as a stitch. We're just going to work our way along. I'll see at the end. So just a reminder, at this end, we're working into our stitch, last stitch, and then we're working into our turning chain. And that's the one you can see it here. So you've got one, two, three chains. It's the top one of those three, the one that's actually coming out of where you put your last stitch in. And we just go in to the top, use the hook under two strands there and then finishing off the stitch. Now I'm going to do my two tight chains again and my one looser chain. Then I'm going to go along, not going into the very first one, going into the second one long, and I'll see you at the end of this row. And then when we get to the end of the row, again we're going into this last treble stitch and this one we're going into has the two small chains and then one bigger one okay so there you've got one small chain one small chain and this one's the bigger one that we're going to be using to go into the stitch making sure we go under two strands finish off the stitch and I'm going to do one more row just so that you can see the difference that making those two short chains you can see them quite clearly there one two and we're in that third one and then so we're going to do that again one two and a big one and then into the second from there and then we're going to work to the end and then finally we're going to go into that very last stitch there oops fell out Happens to the best of us. There we go. Go in, finish off that stitch, and then we can see that we've got our two little tiny ones and one slightly larger one. The clue is this, is where it comes out of here, so that that's where our last stitch went into, and so that's where this stitch is going in. And then we have a much, much straighter square. Okay, now it's not perfect. I know that it, when you block it, wash it and straighten out, pin it out, it will become a bit straighter. This pink one is never going to be straight. Whereas this one, you do have a chance. There is, can you see here, slightly gappy on these ones, slightly less gappy on these ones where I did the shortened where I did the shortened chains. So slightly less gappy. There's nearly always going to be a small gap, but when you block that, so if you block this and pin it out, then those gaps will disappear. And when you have a 
a border or something around the edge you're just not going to notice them but this is obviously far straighter here along here than this one is I hope this helps you create your nice straight edges in your crochet see you soon